If you're an entrepreneurial woman over 40, trying to survive working from home and balancing your productivity and your personal wellness, you're definitely going to want to watch this because in this video, I'm sharing seven tips for self-care and productivity when you're working from home that you can implement in seven days. And make sure you watch all the way to the end for bloopers and behind the scenes. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Abigail. I'm an over 40 content creator and I help other midlife women with their digital revamps and personal reinventions. On this channel, we explore our self-identity, expand our phone-based visual content skills and express our creativity so we can be confident online and create meaningful content. So you're a woman, maybe a mom who works for herself or is building a small business, but your physical work situation has changed drastically since the pandemic hit. And after loads of personal reflection and perhaps a major reprioritization both personally and professionally, you've come to accept the new reality as normal and now you're wanting to regain your sense of connection with yourself, your creative energies and your priorities so that you're able to put your energy into helping your clients and growing your business with more flow and intention. You want to stop the frantic pace and feeling of disconnection that comes with an overload of digital connection and the blurring of boundaries between work and home and personal priorities so that you can show up every day in your best state of being and help others' dreams come true while supporting your own growth and transformation. After watching this video, I hope to have sparked some ideas for how you can create small pockets of self-care in each day, even while working from home, so that you can be more productive in the long run and have more impact in your clients' and families' lives and especially in your own. I know this might seem like a lofty goal, I get it, but the sheer pace of life these days and the many demands placed on your shoulders from your clients, your families, and even your own ambition means that self-care is often at the bottom of the priority list. But by not making yourself your top priority, you're creating the exact circumstances that you don't want, feeling frantic and overwhelmed, overburdened and fearful of dropping the ball, which will lead to a shit ton of other problems that you haven't even thought of yet. What I know for sure is if you don't start prioritizing your self-care, personal wellness, and your own needs, desires, and carefree joy, you'll become more disconnected from yourself, your vision, and your purpose, and you'll begin to resent the work and the very people you love to impact. And I know you know this. You know that this cuts you off from your flow. And before you know it, you're gasping for breath, but nothing comes. I know that many of you, through the work that you do, know the theory of self-care and introspection. It's the things you probably coach your clients on. But I also know the story of the cobbler's shoes or the mechanic's car. It's easier to do it for someone else than it is to do it for yourself. You probably do some of the practices occasionally, but overall, the reality is, you're just overburdened. I'm gonna share a list of seven things that have worked for me and I hope it works for you. Maybe you're already implementing some of these. Maybe you'll be reminded that you used to do one of them. And this is the nudge you need to get back into the habit. Either way, take what resonates and leave the rest. So here's a list of things you can do to prioritize your self-care, personal wellness, and your own needs, desires, and carefree joys so that you can be more productive and be your best self so that you can do your work with energy and enthusiasm and have the impact you want to have and you can implement in a week. All you have to do from then is keep it going. Before I dive into this list though, let me be upfront. I'm about to share ideas and tips I've implemented myself, but also some I've just learned about in my research for this video, which I intend to start doing. I've been working from home for about 80% of my entrepreneurial journey, even before lockdown. My biggest challenge is I struggled to switch off from work. At one point, I realized I didn't know what life was outside of work. I realized that what I thought was productive and admirable was actually the complete opposite. And it meant I wasted so much time being busy, missing out on life, losing touch with inspired ideas and creativity, working on the wrong things and damaging my self-worth. So I ended up working harder to prove my worth and perpetuating the work harder hamster wheel. Your out of balance might look slightly different to mine, especially if you have kids or aging parents you're looking after. But I think we can all agree that at some point we've recognized that the elusive work-life balance has been out of kilter. So that means we can hold each other accountable. So let me know in the comments if you get it and if you're committed to making your self-care and personal wellness a priority so that you can be more productive and impactful in your work. Now to the list. Number one, pockets of routine. If a house needs a strong foundation to be solid and sturdy and is built by placing one brick on top of another, one at a time, your life needs a similar foundation. 
built with one intentional habit at a time. And the foundation of each day is really set by how you start it. So your morning routine is the cornerstone of building an intentional, self-designed life. If you actively design and start every morning in a way that makes you feel good, over time, you'll have built a life that makes you feel good. I recently shared my updated morning routine, which you can see in this video here. Number two, pockets of solitude. Coupled with this daily morning routine is ensuring that every day you experience periods of undisturbed alone time so that you can connect with your thoughts and your emotions. Dot them throughout your day. They don't need to be long from two minutes to 10 minutes at a time will do. And let me be clear, this is not a pocket of time to scroll on Instagram or Facebook. Put your phone on silent and leave it in another room if you have to and simply sit with yourself and your thoughts and your emotions. No digital distractions. It would help if you can get out into nature or at least into your garden. And if need be, have a journal and pen handy to write down any thoughts and ideas or inspiration that comes up. Solitude have helped me realize how much of my mindless work activity is spent on the wrong things. Number three, pockets of transition. It's really helpful and impactful if you can have a specific ritual or demonstration of intentionally moving from one task to another. My pattern as a recovering workaholic is to let one task bleed into the next, which means that at the end of the day, it's hard to distinguish one project from another and ultimately makes me feel like I haven't done anything useful in spite of being busy all day at my laptop. So have a pocket of transition that indicates to yourself where one task ends and another one starts. It might be that you make yourself a coffee or you move location in your home. Keep it interesting and distinguishable based on the type of task you're doing. It's also important to include an end of day ritual where you clearly signify that you're no longer in work mode and you're now fully present at home. You could start with acknowledging what you've created during the course of the day, making notes of your priorities for the next day, and then switching off from work altogether. All your devices. If you have a home office and you can close the door, do that. I do have to confess here that this is the pocket I need to work on most. We live in a studio apartment and my workstation is just always here. So yeah, I've got some work to do. Number four, pockets of creativity. If you watched my new morning routine video, you'll know that I started prioritizing creativity into the start of my day. And I can honestly say that this has had one of the most beneficial impacts on my self-care and personal wellness efforts. It might mean you'll have to learn or practice a creative activity. And if so, sign up to something like Skillshare where they have loads of creative classes. I'm currently learning how to do line art and I never realized how much I enjoy this kind of creativity. So this marries creativity with education. As a result of giving myself permission to do non-work-related creative activities like draw and write and playful self-portraits, I feel like I've opened up a tap that was seized up and the overflow of creative energy has spilled out into other areas of my business. I've had ideas and followed through on new income streams and I've clarified what's important to me in my life and I'm feeling more confident and aligned in my business than I ever have in more than 12 years. This particular pocket has surprised me most. Speaking of surprises, the next is a pocket of surprises. I don't know where I picked it up from, but there's an expression I like to use in response to generic questions like, how was your day? Or as an expression of friendly wishes reserved for birthdays or other celebratory events. Surprise and delight. How was your day? Surprising and delightful. How was your meal? Surprising and delightful. Happy birthday. May your year ahead be surprising and delightful. <laughs> that phrase evokes joyful feelings like, Surprise and delight, go figure. When you feel good, you're in a high vibration state. And when you're in a high vibration state, you make good decisions and take inspired action. So that's why it's important to have pockets of surprise. 
And because we're self-aware, responsible women, we're not going to wait for somebody else to surprise us. We're gonna surprise ourselves. But how do you surprise yourself? If you're good at being spontaneous, great. Go ahead and do more spontaneous things. If spontaneity doesn't come easily, however, then you'll need to gift yourself with a surprise that delights you. The best way to do this is by signing up to a subscription service. Whether it's a box of wine every month or monthly recurring body stress release appointments, or if you're a stationary addict like me, then this monthly subscription box is just the thing for you. The paper offers a subscription known as the Stationary Lovers Club. After seeing how much their loyal customers enjoyed their quality and fun stationery, they decided to create the gem-packed stationery box. Excellent value for money, a great way to grow your stationery collection, and a really fun user experience. If you join their subscription, they'll surprise you with a combination of 8 to 12 items every second month, each box beautifully curated and always different. Papery is a South African company that's innovative, creative and manufactures paper stationery products locally. They pride themselves on quality, reasonable prices with a sprinkling of fairy dust love. Each box will contain various stationery items, a surprise gift and 100% local, handmade, recycled, plantable and biodegradable paper product that when planted can grow into beautiful and living herbs, vegetables or flowers. For the stationery lovers, you have three options. Number one is the Bumper First Box plus six month subscription. You'll receive a surprise box every second month. Number two is the once off box where you get to try before you subscribe or buy a box as a gift for a friend. And the third is to renew your subscription for six months. This offer is also available if you bought the once off box. Join the Stationery Lovers Club today. Click the link in the description below. Number six pockets of connection. Now more than ever, we have to be intentional about reaching out to those who are important to us. I'm guilty because of my workaholic tendencies of being so focused on work that I forget or don't think to reach out to friends and family. This has become even more important lately because I recently decided to delete Facebook and Instagram from my phone as I embark on a no social media lifestyle and business marketing journey. You can watch this video of my business partner Tiffany and I talking about our decision to quit social media. What I've realized on this journey so far is that I was using social media as a social crutch. A mindless scroll here and a half-assed like and comment there sufficed as connection. But how we do one thing is how we do everything. And even though it's only been a couple of weeks, I can feel a big difference in my desire for real conversations with the people who truly mean something to me. And I'm done with the superficial relationships that are perpetuated by social media. What I realized is that I was disregarding other people on social media with a disdainful swipe and they were doing it to me too. Healthy interpersonal relationships are just not the norm when social media is involved. Humans are designed to connect with other humans, not with digital devices that are designed to brainwash us. And let me not go down that road, that's a topic for another video. So, 
pockets of real connection with real people. Have actual conversations daily or at least weekly with someone who's important to you. And number seven, pockets of change. It's easy to get stuck in the rut of routine when you live and work in the same physical space. Days blur into each other. I've even had weeks when I haven't stepped outside our apartment for more than a week and I felt like the frog in a boiling pot. You don't realize how much it's affecting you until you're outside of it. So make sure you get out of your physical space and daily routines as often as possible. Have some scheduled getaways or breaks confirmed in your calendar so that you know there's a physical change coming up soon. If you're not in a position financially to book a lovely holiday, go spend a weekend or a week with family or club together and get a group discount for somewhere nice. Or for free options, perhaps you could do a house swap with a friend or house sit for someone on sites like trustedhousesitters.com. We visit my parents up the coast to spend a week at a time and while in the moment it feels disruptive and like we're not getting as much accomplished, the change of scenery and shift in focus and of course the family connection sparks fresh ideas and renewed energy. So however you can, introduce a physical environment and routine change at intentional intervals. When you implement these seven pockets of self-care and personal wellness into your life, you'll blow away the creative and productive cobwebs and find yourself feeling lighter, more inspired, and you'll have more impact on the work you do and the people you're in contact with. But you have to fill your own pockets first. So the next step is for you to implement. Every single one of these pockets can be actioned in the space of a week. I want you to choose one pocket per day for the next week and implement. Either do the actual thing or book it as a confirmed item. For example, if tomorrow is Monday, you could start your day with your new morning routine. On Tuesday, you can start to implement your pockets of solitude by insisting on at least two minutes of alone time. Plug reminders into your phone if you have to. On Wednesday, you can start to implement your pockets of transition, where you begin to implement a ritual or activity that signifies a change from one task to another. And you decide on your end of day ritual and actually do it. On Thursday, do something creative. Book out an hour for you to do one thing that's creative and has nothing to do with work. Or watch a masterclass and practice a new creative hobby. On Friday, sign up to a subscription service so that you are sent regular gifts in the post or scheduled appointments that are to me, from me, with love. On Saturday, meet a friend or family member for lunch or have a walk in the park together. Or at the very least, pick up the phone and have a real conversation with someone who's important to you. On Sunday, plan, organize, and confirm your next getaway. Offer to house it for someone while they go away on holiday, or you book your own destination. And just like that, in one week, you can radically change your self-care and personal well-being practices, which will have a dramatic positive impact on your productivity and ultimately on your state of being. I'd love to hear your take on this. Of the seven tips I shared, which one do you feel most inspired to take action on this week? Let me know in the comments and even better, come back again and tell me when you've actually done it. I'd love to give a shout out to the person who implements or what they've been inspired to do from this video. Thanks again to The Papery for this incredible box of stationery. And if you'd like to surprise and delight yourself with one of these, follow the link in my description. And if you've appreciated the tips I've shared and how I've put them together in this video, which took me hours and hours to make, by the way, please show me by liking this video, leaving a smiley heart emoji in the comments and subscribing to my channel. Those simple actions inspire me to want to keep creating and sharing more videos like this only better. And now for the bloopers. Thanks for watching. Let me know if if a house needs a strong foundation to be whether it's a wine of box. No, <laughs> I can feel a big difference in my desire for real cause. Oh, for goodness sake. Not with digital device. Ugh. Not with digital. Ugh. Have some scheduled getaways or breaks confirmed in your calorie. Or for free options, perhaps you could do a house swap with a friend or house sit for someone who's... No. Ow. And if you've appreciated the tips I've shared and how I've put them...